Hi everyone, welcome to our farm. I'm Andre Stepler, this is my wife Katie, my daughter Bryn, and my two sons, Brayden and Declan. And we are located at Miami, Manitoba, and we manage 600 beef cows, and we'd love to take you and tour you around. This year we're celebrating 102 years farming. My wife and I are the third generation farmers, and these kids will be the fourth. You'll notice behind me that there's all sorts of different colors to these cows. You can have white cows, brown cows, red cows, or all sorts of different combinations. And usually what that means is what breed they are. The white cows are Charlet, the black ones are Black Angus or Semitol, and the red ones are either Hereford, Red Angus, or Semitols. Each one of our cows has three ways we identify her. She has a tag here, we call a dangle tag, which gives her a number, her dad's on it and her mom's on it. And then up top here is her Canadian tag, which is a CCIA tag or RFID tag. And that has an electronic chip in it so that we just have to scan it and we know exactly who she is. For the RFD tag, we put it in an applicator and we put it in her ear. It pierces it just like you guys getting your ears pierced and it doesn't hurt. And then on our purebred cows, each one of them has a tattoo that is put into the ear, just probably like your dog at home. We have all sorts of different terminology when we talk about cows. So to be a cow, you have to be a female that has had a calf or is over two years of age. So this is a cow. Of course, we have heifers. This is a little heifer calf. So she's a heifer until she's two years old. And of course, if you're a boy cow, you're called a bull and you're a bull all the way through your life. Uh, there's no difference in there. We start to call a heifer a cow after she's had her calf. This little guy takes nine months to grow inside his mom's tummy, so just like us humans. When they come out, they're anywhere from 80 to 100 pounds, so like a great big dog, if you guys have a big St. Bernard, about that size. This is one of our little baby calves. So this little girl, her number is 601, and she's about a week old. And this is her mom here. She just come up to say hello to me, but she will nurse milk from her mom for about uh, 260 days, 280 days. And that's her job for those periods of time is to look after this little one. The calves in behind me here, they're actually getting uh, what we call as a supplement feed. They need a little bit more nutrition than what mom can provide them. So we give them just a little bit more. The pellets are a mixture of energy, protein, vitamins and minerals. And the best part is that it's mostly byproducts, a product that we can't use as humans. The calves will grow up and they'll uh, turn into five to 600 weight calves. And then at that time, it's like they go off to school and we wean them and bring them into our main facility. They grow up to be a cow that's probably up into that 15 to 1800 pounds. These beef cows are one of the most adaptable animals that we have in this area. They have to live outside in the summertime, so they'll lose all their winter hair and they'll slick off so they can live in an environment that's up to plus 30. And then in the winter time, they grow a real thick hair coat, which will help them survive outside when it's minus 30. So it's really a truly an amazing animal. This is what cows eat most of their life. This is grass. This is a product that we can't eat. And the only reason why cows can do it is because they have poor stomachs. So the cow is gonna eat this, put it into her stomach, and then she's actually gonna regurgitate it back up and then she chews it all day the next day. And then there's little microbes that will break that down in her stomach and then that's how she gets food. And then of course, what goes in must come out. So then a cow, as she's grazing the prairies, she'll actually poop and put the nutrition back onto the land and it will start all over again, feeding the grass to grow up nice and strong. In the wintertime, cows can't graze, so what we do is we have to make feed for them. We cut grass, we dry it down, and we put it into a bale, either a square bale or a round bale, and then every day we go out and we give them new feed for them to eat. An adult cow will eat up to 60 pounds a day of grass or hay, and then she will drink 10 gallons of water a day. This is what we call a wetland. This is a water retention pond where we get to provide a natural habitat for all the wildlife here. And then the best part for the cattle is this is their clean drinking water source. So the cattle are fenced out, and what we do is we pump the water down to a trough that's on the other side, 
and they get nice clean water and all the habitat gets a nice clean environment. Another practice we do on our farm is we rotate our cows around the pastures. So what we do is we give them one spot, they graze it all off, and then we move them to the next one where there's nice green grass. This is just what the buffalo would do. They'd stay in one area, graze it right down, and then move to greener grass in another area, allowing that previous grass to regrow for them to come back later on. These cows will eat grass that we cannot eat, and then they turn it into a protein which we eat as steaks, hamburger, sausages, roasts, and many more. Protein is a really important part of our diets, and beef is a really good source of protein. That's why beef is included in the protein part of the Canada Food Guide. We all need protein in our diets because it helps build strong muscles and bones, helps with wound healing, and gives us lots of energy. An easy way to remember the nutrients that beef provides to us is to think of zip, zinc, iron, and protein. To keep a cow herd like this, as healthy as it is, we rely on a lot of different occupations. We have nutritionists, we have vets, we have vet techs, we got people that come and drive tractors for us, we got people that will grow our crop for us, harvest our crop for us. It takes a huge community to keep a cow herd healthy. Thanks for coming to our farm.